Could you briefly introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name's Stone Gettings. I'm part of the founding team and head of growth for Mira Network. Um, my journey is a little bit unorthodox, but I would say it really starts, you know, five, six years ago uh, after I played basketball in college and after the pandemic shut down uh, the season a week before March Madness, I wound up joining Excel. It's a great venture capital firm out in Palo Alto, mostly focused on SaaS and cybersecurity. Um, but very quickly, you know, I became quite enamored with blockchain and certain opportunities within crypto. And that's where I uh, met our co-founder CEO, Karan. Karan uh, was also at Excel on the India team, and we were kind of the two crypto oddballs. After a couple of years there, I wound up leaving Excel to jump into Web3 full time, uh, where I joined Kadena and was leading business development for them uh, while also getting back in shape for basketball. And then in August of 2023, I wound up uh, leaving Kadena to go play professional basketball. And so I w took my talents over to uh, Japan and was playing there uh, in the B League. And that's kind of when, you know, I started to, I was still advising and helping some projects on the side, uh, but mostly just focused on basketball. And then that's where I really reconnected with Karan, um, you know, who I've stayed in touch with. And, you know, we're really good friends beyond Mira and whatnot. And, you know, this was about the time ChatGPT was taking off. We started to get really excited about opportunities for open source LLMs. And, you know, we wound up uh, bringing in uh, Sid, who's our other co-founder, CTO, uh, and also CTO from uh, one of our portfolio companies, Stater Labs, previously, and one of his good friends from Columbia, where he was getting his master's degree in 2010, Minot, uh, who's our head of product and came out with Ensemble Evaluation. And so I would say Mirror really started in the fall of 2023. And then fast forward to January, early 2024. And that's when we wound up going out to market um, for our fundraise. You know, we're able to raise $9 million from BigCraft, Framework, Excel, Crucible Ventures, Balaji, a bunch of other KOLs and smaller funds. Uh, and yeah, that would be kind of the journey or at least the inception story of how Mira got started. Um, and now fast forward a year and a half later um, and, you know, things are going really well. We've got mid seven figures of users across 20 to 30 different projects that are using our private API keys. And essentially what we're doing is verifying the accuracy of AI outputs and driving hallucination rates down. You know, for those who aren't as familiar, AI hallucinates anywhere from 20 to 40 percent. And, you know, we're able to drive those rates down to three or four percent. And hopefully over time, we can get them closer to one percent and completely eliminate hallucinations. Didn't know that you were a master. Yeah, I had to. Uh, <laughs> while you're sitting down, it's a little bit harder to tell, but I had to put my height to use. And so I was just lucky that I got to you know, got a chance to play professionally. Um, you know, it was really cool playing in Japan and then in Portugal. Um, and I just feel really blessed with how it worked out. Uh, and, you know, couldn't be happier with the team that we have over at Mira. You know, we've got great experience, as you can see, kind of from Excel. And then Nanad also spent uh, the a better part of the mid-2010s at Amazon, leading a lot of their work in AI. And then more recently was CTO minus one, you know, over at Uber, doing a lot uh, on the product side there. Uh, and integrating a lot of different AI functionality. So, where's the architecture for addressing AI hallucinations using blockchain technology? It's quite impressive. So, what are the key differentiators that's like your network for companies? Yeah, so especially when you look at the crypto AI landscape, there's a lot of talk around verification. Um, and so I would say that there's, you know, there's different types of verification. Um, you've got Lagrange leveraging ZKML, verifying inputs. You've got Fallon Network uh, focused on TEEs, trusted execution environments. And so that kind of sits on the side of, you know, the input data, making sure that you're using real data versus synthetic data. You're using real data versus synthetic data, making sure that you're actually using LLMs, you know, so that you avoid a builder AI situation where, you know, they're essentially faking the LLM work um, and just using humans. And so where Mira sits is we completely focus on the outputs. So as I mentioned, AI hallucinates anywhere from you know, 20 to 40%, depending on the query. And while you can have the best input data, real input data and everything else, AI still you know, falls victim to hallucinations. And so what Mira does is leverage our ensemble evaluation, which is a novel approach to this. You can think about you know, when you query an LLM, you could get a 
variety of different responses. Let's imagine them as circles. And by leveraging multiple different LLMs, it's almost like intersecting a Venn diagram. And so you get a much more precise response uh, and with much greater accuracy. Uh, very interesting for the practice in success on multiple AI models. So how do you ensure a model diversity with any single model for dominating? Yeah, so we've got a lot of different decentralized validators, different compute partners um, that are all running different models. You know, right now, uh, we're mostly leveraging as those three models that are verifying uh, Llama, uh, OpenAI, and Claude. And so, you know, between those three models, you get quite a variety of, you know, different responses. And so, as I mentioned, you're able to really refine your outputs and get the most accurate response, you know, because the risk of one model hallucinating, you know, is 20 to 40%, but the risk of three models, you know, all reaching consensus on the wrong output is, you know, astronomically lower. And so, you know, by leveraging these multiple models and even, you know, models beyond Llama, ChatGPT, and OpenAI, or, and Claude, then introducing those into the network also prevents, you know, this singular kind of risk that you have with one LLM dominating. Think, uh, can you like explain any like real world examples of how you open AI? Yeah, so you know, I think one of our earliest use cases, um, we were working with the India uh, India's National Testing uh, Organization, and so essentially, you know, it was taking them. Their humans were writing these questions manually, you know, similar to like the SAT in America, and it was taking them anywhere from thirty minutes to an hour to come up with these different questions uh, for the exams. And by leveraging our private API keys, they were able to generate lists of questions. And so you're able to turn humans from having to creatively come up with these questions on your own to now they're just checking the questions, making sure that they make sense. And so, you know, we were able to cut their time from down to create a question from 30 minutes to an hour, all the way down to, you know, less than five minutes and give them, you know, 90% plus cost savings. I'm really excited because, you know, hallucinations aren't a problem that exists solely in crypto. You know, hallucinations are present everywhere, and especially as AI becomes more integrated um, in everyday life outside of crypto, too. You know, uh, where the stakes are high, you simply just cannot have hallucinations. There's, um, we're looking to expand uh, beyond crypto into, you know, the legal space, into the health space, you know, because you can't have doctors misdiagnosing you. You know, if you're a lawyer and you cite past precedent that was hallucinated by an AI, you know, you're going to get fined, fired, and, you know, potentially disbarred. And so in those type of instances, that's where, you know, Mira really shines. And so we have some beta customers, you know, leveraging our private API keys, as I mentioned, um, you know, now. And so it's a really exciting time for us. Twitter, you're saying, what's your plans on maybe your teaching yeah, you know, uh, my fiance and uh, who says that I have a big mouth and, uh, you know, I think my uh, my team also, you know, I, I worry sometimes about my loose lips. So all I can say uh, regarding TGE is uh, to stay tuned to our Twitter. Obviously, um, you know, there are some exciting things happening and I would, you know, turn on your notifications uh, because I would say it's uh, sooner than you would think, um, but I can't give out any specific details, uh, you know, in terms of timing, but stay tuned to our Twitter um, and we'll share more updates there. But it's, uh, it's definitely an exciting time for us and we're really excited about it's been a it's been a long year and a half, um, you know, a building and everything else. And. You know, I just couldn't be more proud of our team and, you know, in terms of the support that we have and, you know, growing to mid seven figure users and having, you know, our private APIs in production with 20 to 30 applications with that user base is a challenge in and of itself. And so, you know, we're really excited to continue our march along uh, to mainnet and uh, Twitter is going to be the best place to get any of any and all of the updates. Are there any like, upcoming products or features that you can maybe share with us? Yeah, so we recently launched our Verify API. Um, and so that's been fantastic for us as we expand the adoption for that with a lot of different beta customers. Uh, if you're interested in getting early access, shoot me a DM on Twitter and, you know, I'll see what I can do there. As I mentioned, you know, there's a variety of different applications already, you know, building on top of Mira, leveraging this API um, from Clock, which is our 
you know, chatbot that's kind of a single pane of glass, allowing you to interact and query multiple different LLMs. Uh, we have a great astrology app, um, a great AI image generator, and we're announcing new partnerships, you know, on mostly a weekly basis. Uh, Zero G was one of our more recent partners that we just announced. Uh, and so really excited to be out here with them. They're doing a great job here at KBW. And, um, you know, when it comes to future plans and the roadmap, I would say, as I mentioned earlier, it's really expanding the adoption for our API beyond just crypto use cases, expanding into Web2, you know, like with legal and health use cases. We're working on a solutions architect agent that'll, you know, help people like me and ecosystem uh, growth hackers, so to speak, um, so that you can manage your contacts a little bit easier, as well as, you know, get more DevRel support without having to set up calls with teams, you know, um, integrating this agent with a lot of different projects. And so stay tuned to our Twitter and uh, we'll share more updates over there. I think a lot of like, people are like, just sitting here and actually they are like, participating in a lot of cafe and like, yeah. So would you say anything for the career market or the career and some questions for yeah, no, uh, the support out here is uh, overwhelming and I couldn't be happier to be back in Seoul. Uh, I love every single time that I come out here. It's uh, my fifth trip to Seoul in the past year. And so super excited and, you know, the welcome and, you know, just uh, community support has been overwhelmingly positive and I'm just so excited to be here. Uh, I was showing you the videos earlier. I was just over at the GOG booth and, and it was it was pure chaos in the best way possible. Um, I feel really lucky and blessed to have such a strong community um, and just to receive so much support. You know, so all I can say to Korea is uh, I love you guys and uh, thank you so much for your support. Yeah, of course. Thanks so much for having me.